I2C is incredibly powerful and using just two wires, we can connect up to 1008 devices within one I2C loop. I2C is a communication protocol that's used to transmit information between electronics. I2C was developed by Philips in 1982 to assist with the communication between the CPU and the different peripherals within its audio and visual appliances. Since then, it's been periodically updated and now can support transfer speeds of up to 3.2 megabits per second. Now, before we continue, we must understand that there are two main devices within an I2C loop. There's a master and the slave. The master is transmitting information, the slave is receiving information. Masters are typically your microcontrollers or your brains, and slaves are usually your peripherals such as, you know, an external sensor or a display device, etc. Like I mentioned before, there are two different wires where information in the I2C loop is carried out through. There's the SDA and the SCL, which is the serial data and the serial clock. Now, the actual information within an I2C loop is sent using something called a message. Now, each message is broken down into different frames. Each frame is responsible for a different job. Firstly, we have the start condition. The start condition basically signals that a message is going to be sent and get ready for it. Next, we have the address frame. The address frame is basically responsible for identifying which device or which slave is the master trying to communicate to. This is also followed by a read or write bit. That means is the master requesting information or is the master sending information to the slave? Next, we have the acknowledge bit. So once this information reaches the appropriate device, the device will acknowledge, okay, yes, this address is for me. It's like sending a post to someone, right? Once the post reaches your home, you'll acknowledge it by signing perhaps that, okay, I have received this post in the mail. After this acknowledge bit is received by the master, the master will actually send the actual data. That means the information that it's trying to transmit. This is also followed by a few acknowledge bits just to make sure that the data transmission is going smoothly. Lastly, we have the finish condition. Just like the start condition, this basically signals the end of the message. Let's use a real life example to understand how I2C works. Here we have a boss that's saying, listen up. This is like a start condition. Next, we have the boss calling out who he needs to talk to. This is like an address. Next, we have Kevin replying with an acknowledge bit. Now, there's actual data transmitted when the boss says, finish that report. That's the instruction. Now, Kevin again replies with an acknowledge bit. Now, lastly, the boss ends the conversation with the end condition. In this I2C demo, the boss is the master and Kevin is a slave. Now that we've understood how I2C works, let's actually talk about some of the alternatives to I2C. Firstly, we have serial communication. Now, serial communication also uses two wires, but its biggest drawback is that you can only use it to communicate between two devices. You cannot add more like I2C. Next, we have SPI. Now, SPI is similar to I2C in the sense that you can control multiple devices within one communication loop, but SPI uses three to four wires as a minimum and every additional device that you connect to your master will have an additional wire which can make it very messy for bigger projects. Next, let's talk about some of the downsides of I2C. The actual software and the implementation of I2C is actually quite complicated. However, most of this work is done by the manufacturers and by using open source uh, libraries, I2C implementation for hobbyists like you and I is very simple. Next, I2C is significantly slower than SPI but it can still be faster than serial. Now let's talk about some of the positives of I2C. Firstly, it doesn't need a dedicated control line for each device such as SPI. I2C only uses two wires no matter how many devices you have connected. Next, we can have multiple masters or transmitters within one communication loop. Again, this is not possible by SPI. And lastly, the acknowledge frame within each message is a good way to ensure that your message is being properly received and nothing is wrong. Lastly, let's talk about how you can implement I2C in your Raspberry Pi or Arduino powered project. For the Raspberry Pi, you actually have two I2C compatible pin pairs. The first is pins three and five, and then pins 27 and 28. To enable these pins, you actually have to go into Raspberry config, go into interfacing options, and then enable I2C. Next, to actually use it in your project, you do need to have rpi.gpio package installed within your Python code. The Arduino implementation of I2C is actually a little easier. First, you have to check which pins on your board are compatible with I2C. For example, on the Arduino Uno, the, those pins are pins A4 and pins A5. Next, to actually use it in your code, you have to go into libraries and import the wire.h library. That's it for this quick tutorial. Now, I'll be making dedicated videos for both SPI and serial communication. If you have any questions, comments, you can leave them down in the comment section below. And if you want to subscribe for more future videos or tutorials like these, please feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.